Atomic. Atomic. Oh, you mean the uh, yeah. 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 No. No, it's the atomic. 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 The biggest, yeah. So, state streets, yeah. So, state streets. Yeah. Yeah. so you use ownership? Okay. Uh, no. Part of, no. Okay. We are not that sure. Okay. So, Can everyone hear me at the back? Uh, okay. Uh, welcome to the Systems Engineering Track at uh, DevCon US. Thank you for being here. Uh, before we get started, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, the first one is that we are having a party in the evening. It'll be at the beach, at the BU Beach. So if you wish to uh, attend, you'll need to pick up your ticket from the registration desk. Uh, and the second thing is that we have uh, the Red Hat CTO speaking tomorrow at the DevConf keynote. That's at 9.30 in the morning in the big auditorium, the one that you see from the window here. So please uh, attend that. Uh, and now let's get started. The next talk is Lessons Learned uh, by Migrating Python 2 Projects to Python 3 by Jun Fu. And I'll hand it over to him. So, hi. So, uh, thank you all being with me. So, my name is Chen Fu Wen from the Red Hat Company located in Beijing. So, today I want to present one topic about lessons learned by Migrating Python 2 Projects to Python 3. Because in the recent several years, we are working on some projects, migration, so we want to share some experience about that. So here's the agenda today. So first thing, I will have a very, very simple introduction about the, our current project is our cardo.vt and the TBD board. Secondly, I will show some protein strategy. Just about it, because we have some, a lot of other tools to do some stuff, easy stuff for you. So I will introduce some of them and uh, analyze where to use them. Finally, we during the migration, we meet a lot of uh, uh, common technical issues. So I want to share some experience about. So the project our current Dashbity is just a, a compatible plugin that lets you execute virtualization the data task case is task normal. Its main purpose is to serve as an automated dependent testing framework for the world developers. So, TBD World project is the specific to some uh, virtualization functions such as libword, libgfs, and lvsp, some kind of things. So, all these projects are writing in Python 2007 before the migration. Actually, it's a, this project is a dependency with the other, so we just put in both of them together. So there are various uh, reasons why we need the motivation. I think one of mine is the, because on Python 3, we have, for example, we have faster performance than Python 2. That has some static indicating that uh, on Python 3.6, 
it can serve in CPU 12%, and the memory footprint can save 30%. Also, on panel 3, there are a bunch of dark fields, especially for some six CVE fix. And also, there are nearly, uh, newly uh, introduced some advanced features, such as I think IO. And also, on panel 3, there are better type definition, the set the string and the price. The unify long int, integer, and the integer. So it's previous for leading, cannot persuade you to make leading to pen three. I think the last one is the concrete reason, because uh, at the end of at the in the end of 2012, 2010, 20, the pattern two will be end of life. So motivation strategy. Luckily there are three of them. Number one is just uh, convert. That means like, that you convert your whole source code from Python 2 to Python 3. Just completely say goodbye to Python 2. So this is a dramatic, dramatic, dramatic strategy. And the second is to just create a separate branches for Python 2 and Python 3. That means that you know, there are two sets of code. One is speak to the Python 2, and the other is speak to the Python 3. So if you have one feature or one new fix, you should push the code back to two different branch. So it's your double maintain, maintenance effort. The third analysis strategy is to just coexist. That means that you only use one, the same set of code base, and it can support Python 2, Python 3. For all projects, because they all busy need, so we just use the number three strategy. So specific the strategy to our projects, we, this project, we need to put in all the modules and uh, test case to Python 3. It's uh, not less than 3.6 version. And uh, after porting, we, try, we need to keep it keep line compatibility, compatibility with the Python 2.7. So what could change, we just push to the mass branch. So at the beginning, we are trying to create a separate branch to check in the polling effort. But later, we realize there are huge gap between the polling branch and the master branch. So it will a lot of effort to multiply like merge back like, to the master branch. And the reason is that we also have some new feature integrated to the master branch. So we just push all the, we don't try to create new branch. So we just push all the changes back to the mass branch. And with need, all the code changes need to be validated on both Python 2 or Python 3 environment. So we set up some really scaling testing, including unit, unit testing or integrated testing, use the chicken pipeline. And uh, my, good example, my good idea is to use some tools. For example, Python 2 have one tool, the palette, you with the option price the key, it can help you to locate the scope of changes required. That means you give your tools to estimate what effort you needed to do the migration or do the porting. So you can your the, do some planning, how many efforts or how many resources you can you need to be used during the migration. So we use the continuous integration. We roughly divide the porting efforts into the three phases. In the phase one, we address some very common issues that are easy to fix. For example, as automated tools can be fixed. And uh, in the phase two, we just fix the manual issues that automated tools cannot fix that and the remove of some dependencies. The final phase, the phase three, we just uh, set up some uh, do more troubleshooting because the when long in the product here, we find some issues, we just uh, focus on fix these issues. And uh, we just start with each part. I just mentioned in the phase two, we just uh, try to fix some uh, with the uh, obvious solution. And uh, we use increment integration. That means we use the separate PR request, pull request to check only one specific, specific category issues. So if we find some issues, it is easy for us to load back. So, and uh, just I mentioned that we set up some continuous pipeline on all, all, in all production. So we, each day we monitor the results, and if we find an issue, we quickly fix that. 
So the, fun, the fundamental idea is we try to don't break anything when porting, but it's an ideal situation. Actually, we have a, quite a few leakage, but because we finalized many earlier, so it's it could, uh, it's quite fixed that. So sec, uh, kind of second part, because the magnetization is quite hard, it's time consuming and effort consuming. So now since we should know that there are a lot of tools to do some easy stuff since for you. So I just uh, list some tool here and uh, I will analyze where it, they should be fit in. So tool three, tool three is the first released lab that make a short uh, code between the pattern two and pattern three. And it's will is actually is the Python program, and it will do source to source to source transformation. So it's firstly we read pattern two code and apply a serious fixer to test them into the validate pattern two code. So actually pattern two two to three is the uh, have underlying dependence lab library is lab two to three. This lab is the kind of rich set of fixes that will be kind of almost all your code. Also, one benefit that is the flexible and the genetic library. So it is easier for you to write your own fixes, such as fertilization or modernization, and just based on this package. So here you may want how to use that. So you can, by default, to the 3 d tool, you uh, long a set of predict, predict, predefined fixer. So your sign flag can be used. For example, uh, so dash f will be uh, explicitly, explicitly speak by uh, what kind of fix you need. For example, this command line is the I want to fix sign relative import issue and the dictionary had key issue. And I want to uh, uh, disable, uh, apply this function, fix, and I just uh, apply this to the single pattern file. And this command also can be uh, apply all the fix, and uh, also use dash w, so I can override the changes back to your Python file. So this, another tool is the filterize. Fertilize is a customized two to three script, and uh, it's, it's, it's depend on the Python future package. This package is the compatibility layer between Python two and Python three, and it allow you to use single clean Python two code based to support both two and three. So modernize uh, fertilize is the try to make your code to. Python 3, the code style is Python 3, but uh, we will provide some fix, because uh, many code map to the Python 3, some code may be not work on Python 2. So then we will apply some fix, make them work on the Python 2. So you can run fill-out command in two stages. So stage one is just migration your to complete code to the Python 3. And the stage two, we are to try to apply some fix because the, when the code is mapped to pan three, they may it not work in the pan two. So stage two, we are apply some fix based on your current pan three code style. Six, six, six is a another compatibility doubly. You can see that six is widely widely used in the open stack. They also use the sixth module to try to make them compatibility. And uh, so it's, re it's really simple. It's fixed, provides simple utilities for mapping all the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. So it's in intended to support code base that work from both 2 and 3 without modification. So how you can do that? Actually, in the six, they define a lot of classes, functions, attributes. And uh, when the six, when you import a service module or a package, which will automatically de detect what Python environment you're running, and uh, it will point to the specific class or functions or attributes in your under your uh, uh, Python environment. So. 
And the six is only one Python file, so it's finally copied into your new project. So final tool is the modernize. The modernize is the uh, harness the lab to do split. It also is the script, and it depends on more than this uh, lab learning. So it's a very thin lab along lab to do split to utilize is to make Python to code more modern with the intention of eventually pulling to over to the Python 3. So modernize is just make your code to be modern, but the code base is still angle to Python 2. So how it used, how can we use that? It's very similar to Kudu 3. So here people may wonder to how can I choose, uh, can I choose the visualize or modernize? So visualize, I just mentioned that the code base is something like Python 3. So modernize is just code base is still Python 2. So it's dependent on your project. If you eventually want to migration or your code code it to Python 3, so I highly recommend you use the modernized tool, and uh, the synchronized tool, because the, the code style is the Python 3. So now the, kind of the final part is the common technical issues we, we account during the migration. So I just uh, uh, categorize those issues with several categories. Number one is the essential syntax. It is called obviously. And the size is bound means that on Python 3, there are a lot of modules, classes, or function attributes are dropped. And the size is the name is that in on Python 3, there are quite a of modules just changing their module name to comply with file name conventions. Something is the organized that there are a lot of standard levels, standard levels to redistribute to different module to make it, it more easier or uh, consistent to be maintained or be, to be used. So to, to the developer, most challenging part should be the large difference between the tags and the finally changes. So then in the following, I will address that. So in central syntax difference, we are uh, print and uh, Print and the exec, you know, now it now is the function instead of statement. There are slightly uh, changes in the uh, exception handling. You should use the keywords as now on Python 3. Matter class attribute and remove, but you still can use you still can use as the parameter in its construction. So this exception also have slightly changes. You need to enclose inclu your Parameter in a parenthesis. Some complex functions such map, filter, tip, now return in data rate instead of list. In most cases, it work, but if you apply index on the done, because the is return iterator, so if you apply some index on the iterator, it should be have some issues. So after literals, there are small changes. You need to put small letter O among them. And on Python 3, we only support explicit relative import. For example, in this package, there are two modules, test one, test two, part part. So you want to improve, on Python 2, in the test two part, uh, you want to import test part, you just use this syntax. But in Python 3, you need to use this one. Is only support the implicit import. And the Python 3, they are unified long integer and the integer as one. So the, the suffix with big letter L will not support it. So on Python 3, it's a spot real float division. So it's, it's a particular dangerous because it's, we are not slow syntax error and it goes unnoticedly. So just be careful for the division. And for the dictionary, iterated keys, iterated values, and it acting as key, what is function has been removed. You can use the list function to replace that. Make the is the solution make them compatible on both of uh, Python. And uh, dictionary keys, dictionary values, 
now return a dynamic view and instead of list. So it's most case it work. But if you apply some index on the dynamic view, it will store you will have a store error. Right. Next. Uh, in addition, in pattern 2, we have uh, measures next. But uh, on pattern 2, we need to double, uh, double underscore next. So make it compatible, you just uh, need to define uh, Alice for this measure. And then use the building function next, global function to that. Uh, for Unicode, because in uh, the first way default test string is in uh, store is a Unicode spot, so this function is removed. You can use this to make it compatible. Come function is removed, you can define it by yourself. This label use dict is removed. You need to from collection package import left. And the uh, low import actually you need to import and uh, but on the Python tool, there are two input. The one is low input and other import. So actually, low input is the natural import, and the import is removed. So you can use the uh, six movie import light. S range is uh, the natural range, actually, and the previous range is removed. And apply the function also is removed. You can use the function and with the star before the list parameter, and the file also removed. Exact file also removed. This is some demo code to uh, implement by yourself. Command, commands module remove. You need to use sub process to that. And the uh, system module uh, mirrors and functions in the store on pattern two, but uh, on the pattern they are totally removed. So you need to just apply the store building in functions. Uh, something is related. So just to mention that on Pass 3, there are a lot of modules are being needed to comply with the funding conditions. So this is some of the high, high list are on the highlight. So for example, configure spots. So how to make them compatible? You can use try is a simple arrow to deal with this. And there are more. For example, picker building in a stock server is also have a similar solution for that. Something is organized. Just I mentioned that some module are uh, just organized to send each standard levels to make it more easily or uh, consistent to be used. Uh, it's, so each special in the URL lab, URL lab two and the URL lab two parcel, those modules are heavily reorganized. And uh, these modules have been distributed to some on part three, there is an uh, parent module is your lab. And this, on this parent module, there are some sub-modules, your, your lab dot, your, your, your lab parcel, your, your lab dot, uh, your request, and uh, your lab dot arrows. So try to make the compatibility, you, you need to use try or insert input arrow. This is not only way to that. You can use a six movie package. It will handle gracefully for you. So it's just uh, one alternative solution. And uh, it's also applied to HTTP server, HTTP parcel, but I will lose the part genome also that is distributed to different package in industry. And some building in function, the load in turn, those function as a to Package to different, uh, remove to different package. So try to use try, except name arrow to that, make them compatible. So now let kind of the last part is the test and binary plans. So to develop, I think the most challenging part because the they could to, uh, to take a look at this table. So for test string, we on pattern three we use stern to represent that. And on panel two, we use Unicode. For the binary data, we on the panel three, we use bytes. But on panel two, there are two. It's bytes and the stern. Bytes only the alias of stern on panel two. So panel two and the panel three confusing use stern. 
to many differences. For Python 3, that means the test string. Python 2 is a binary string. So it's the huge difference. So this kind of change actually brings uh, yeah, a lot of challenges. So one lesson we learned is that try to avoid this text and finally sequence. So we are heavily uh, stuck here. For example, we might a lot of issues, uh, kind of below catalog of those issues. For example, con concat bytes to string. So if you combine bytes and the stir, string together, now they will slow the arrow on the Python screen. Can't use a string pattern on bytes like object in the likelihood exception. So pattern is the string, string, and uh, double X is the bytes. If you, you use that on Python 3, it's a slow arrow. But in Python 2, it's, it's work. Can't convert bytes object to the stir implicitly. Uh, for example, we want to replace the uh, stir here with the uh, bytes, so it will slow the arrow. So during all migration, we might a lot with issues. So we, try, we just try to uh, manually fix that. The second is the remember you need to decode the bytes and the encoded text. So how can convert them? Bytes and the text. So if you need to use the encode measures, uh, functions and uh, or decode functions. So you just, uh, if you want to make sure that the bytes, you just use the decode function and you want to be bytes, you, you use the encoding. So don't do it in words. Since that uh, those conversion, your common use with the heavy so it's a good practice just uh, define them into the, your, in your, your utilities module. So it's sign of for examples. For example, you want to to text, and uh, this is your input parameter, and this is the encoding. So first you can judge that whether it's the uh, is it the binary data? Is it is we just decoding with encoding default encoding coding. And if not, we just return that. Uh, to bytes, it's quite simple. We just you uh, use the previous one and the two sign decoding. So it's just the uh, some utilities we use. Because uh, there are some Confusing use the stir in the pattern to open three. So also it impacts your API defini definition. Even your, so just uh, watch out, be careful your API definition. So you need to uh, realize you want to accept the parameter is the index or finally, don't try to miss them. Because uh, it's harder to Hey, keep code, code working if you want to accept both of the parameters. In Python 2, it works, but on the it doesn't. So make sure that the API that can access text parameter can also work with the Unicode. Uh, you know that uh, of Python 2, uh, if your API or Functions work on Python 2. So probably you need to do some input some special Unicode code to validate that. Because the, uh, on Python 3, we are default string, uh, string is the Unicode. There are much large little, uh, letters. So. And those that work with binary uh, must work with bytes. So on Python 2, sometimes in your API, you, you just use stir for that. So stir means that it could be test, it could be by binary. So if it probably has some issues, 
on pen 3. So you need to just uh, on pen 3, you need to test with some by, by best data and make sure that it works. So just uh, restrict in whether you're passing text or binary data. That means that we recommend that you use the prefix that B or U sounds like this the prefix to distinguish your parameter. Also, it will make your code look a little bit more human, human uh, clearly, let people know that. Not just uh, use an ambiguous term. So, uh, there are some useful resources here. So this is, I think, uh, provided by Red Hat. They, they have summarized uh, how to migration project in a conservative way, not so dramatic. Also, there are a lot for analysts for the other three new features. So that's it. So question. Any questions? Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have another minor announcement to make. Due to the weather forecast, the location for the party has been uh, changed. It will be in the Ziskind Lounge, so where lunch is available, that's where it will be. So. Thank you.